ಶ್ರೀ ಗಣೇಶ ಶಾರದ ಗುರುಭ್ಯೋ ನಮಃ ಉತ್ತರಂ ಯತ್ ಸಮುದ್ರಸ್ಯ ಹಿಮಾದ್ರೇಶ್ಚೈವ ದಕ್ಷಿಣ ವರ್ಷಂ ತದ್ ಭಾರತ ನಾಮ ಭಾರತೀಯತ್ರ ಸಂತತಿ ವೆಲ್ಕಮ್ ಟು ಆಲ್ ಫಾರ್ ದಿಸ್ ಸೆಷನ್ ಆನ್ ಸ್ಕಾಂದ ಪುರಾಣ ಟು ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ನೈನ್ಟೀನ್ ಆಫ್ ಕೌಮಾರಿಕಾ ಕಾಂಡ ಅಂಡ್ ಅರ್ಥ ಮಹೇಶ್ವರ ಕಾಂಡ ಇನ್ ಸಿನ್ಸ್ ದ ಪ್ರೀವಿಯಸ್ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ವಿ ವರ್ ಸೀಯಿಂಗ್ ದ ಫಿಯರ್ಸ್ ಬ್ಯಾಟಲ್ ಬಿಟ್ವೀನ್ ದ ಸುರಾಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದ ಅಸುರಾಸ್ and kalanemi was making a very serious battle with the suras making a greater losses to them narada who is telling this story to arjuna continued the infuriated kalanemi did not recognize their real forms because of a a particular uh, magical astra a indrajala astra that was sent by the sun god all the suras looked like asuras and asuras looked like suras this confused kalanemi who went on killing many daityas and he thought nimi the great daitya to be a deva hence with great dexterity and rapidity he caught hold of the hero by the hair and dragged him and roared thereupon nimi one of the daitya said thus to extremely powerful kalanemi i am nimi o kalanemi do not kill me thinking me to be a sura know the deluded as you are in the course of this battle ten crores of asuras your own people who are unvanquishable to suras have been killed by you mistaking them to be the devas hence hurry up discharge the brahmastra that foils all other missiles on being enlightened by him that daitya became agitated and let him off hurriedly he duly discharged an arrow charged with brahmastra thereupon that brahmastra blazed in the sky in an extremely miraculous manner the entire army of devas became frightened and excited contracted by the brahmastra the shambara missile with a magical magical effect became ineffective when his missile was repulsed the sun god became angry he resorted to a great indrajala magic and made his body extremely terrible he occupied the whole of the three worlds by means of his exploding dazzling mass of rays the lord scorched the army of danavas whose marrows bones and blood began to melt away he made the eyes of the great danavas blind the fat of the elephants trickled down chariots fell on the ground the horses and the charioteers who were distressed by the scorching heat heaved deep sides suffering from thirst they went about here and there in search of water they roamed over valleys and chasms between mountains the ridges of the mountain and the forests even as the south water hovering round one another an extremely fierce forest fire raged there burning down all the trees around the seekers of water saw in front of them waves of water though it was in front of them they could not reach it or get at it here and there the great daityas were seen lying down dead on the ground without getting water quickly very near near to them on the ground chariots and elephants fell down horses became excessively tired they ran about here and there they vomited blood fat scot melted blood trickled down crores and crores of danavas were seen dead when such a huge destruction of danavas occurred kalanemi became afflicted with fury excessive anger made his eyes copper colored he assumed the form of a black cloud hundreds of his shining hair were like streaks of lightning the majestic sound that he produced by striking his arms was like the thunder clap though through which he made the hearts of hearts in the universe tremble covering the entire sky he destroyed the luster of the sun completely he showered cool water over the army of the great danavas getting that shower daityas gained relief gradually 
just like the seedlings and sprouts that had got withered due to heat and became fresh on getting a good shower on the earth, the daityas became refreshed. Thereafter, in the form of a cloud, Kalanemi, the great Asura, who could not be defeated, made a terrible shower of weapons on the armies of Devas. On being afflicted through that shower of Daityas and others, Devas could not see any way out like the cows afflicted by chillness. Extremely frightened, they took shelter under one another among the elephants, horses, and the chariots, they concealed themselves in various places. While they were trying to hide themselves, they were killed by Kalanemi. Devas were seen falling down with the joints of their limbs broken by the weapons. Their heads were torn asunder, their heads were shattered, their thighs and knees were broken, the chariot wheels were turned upside down. Strong flagstaffs fell down, thousands of horses and ten thousands of elephants were killed. On account of the terrible flow of their blood, the whole ground became impossible. Thus, in the course of that battle, Kalanemi, the great Daitya of immense power, killed within a short period a hundred thousand Gandharvas, five hundred thousand Ekshas, 500,000 Kinnaras and 700,000 leading Pishachas are the ghosts. There is no count of other species of Suras. Infuriated Kalanemi, who had become excessively haughty and furious, killed crores of them fearlessly. In that great, terrible holocaust of Devas, the heroic Ashwins became excessively enraged. They shone brilliantly with their various missiles and armors of variegated shapes. They struck everyone in the Daityas in the battle with sixty arrows. All those arrows pierced through the bodies of the great Daityas and entered the earth along with the feathers fixed to their extremities. Talanemi somehow came to his senses on account of their hitting with arrows. He took up a discus with a hundred thousand spokes that had been smeared with oil and that was considered a superior weapon in battle. With that discus he cut off the shaft of the chariot of Ashwins. Then the Daitya took up a bow and arrows comparable to serpents. He showered volleys of arrows on the head of physicians, that is Ashwins, covering the sky above with the arrows. They too cut off all the arrows of Daityas by means of missiles invoked by them. On seeing this feat, feat of those two, the Daitya was surprised and got enraged. He took up a mallet as terrible as the baton of Kala, that is a god of death. He filled it with great force and hurled it against his chariot. On seeing that mallet approaching, even while it was in the sky, both the Ashwins left off their chariots with great speed. That mallet, resembling a mountain, pounded and trashed both the chariots. That mallet, adorned with a number of gold plates, tore off the ground beneath. On seeing that action of his, the physicians with wonderful ways of fighting, fought with the great Dhanava, assaulting him with an adamantine missile, Vajrastra. On account of terrible strokes from the thunderbolt, the Dhanava was wounded. Even as the entire army was watching it, the chariot, the flagstaff, the bow, the umbrella and the armor got split into hundred pieces in a moment. On seeing that marvelous, that is difficult to be performed deed of the Ashwins, the Daityas of terrible exploits and great strength discharged the Narayana missile in the course of that battle. Thereupon the Vajrastra, the adamantine missile thunderbolt became quizzed. Palanemi then angrily attempted to catch hold of Ashwins alive. On getting his intention, both of them abandoned the battlefield. 
with all their limbs trembling they fled on foot to the place where vasava indra was present kalanemi the daitya closely pursued them roaring frequently the cruel daitya followed by his entire army entered the army of indra where he rushed at indra like the god of death at the close of a kalpa all the living beings became agitated on seeing him giving out loud cries of distress they was thought that it was a defeat of mahendra leading to the destruction of all the worlds all the big mountains quake meteors fell down from the sky the clouds roared and rumbled there was a loud sound in all the quarters on seeing the ominous happenings of all the bhutas that is elements of living beings devas including indra became frightened they mentally sought refuge in vasudeva the lord of the universe obisans to brahmanya deva to the lord helpful in the welfare of the cows and brahmanas obisans to krishna the benefactor of the universe repeated obisans to govinda may that govinda save us thus the suras who were overwhelmed by fright prayed repeatedly knowing what they were thinking of the garuda emblem lord woke up taking off his yogic slumber the lord got up from his bedstead the lord whose lotus like feet were gently pressed and caressed by the lotus like pair of hands of lakshmi the brilliant complexion of whose body was akin to the luster of the autumnal sky and the blue lotus whose chest shone with the jewel kaustubha whose beautiful armlets were as brilliant as the sun and he pondered over the agitation of suras and sent for vainateya garuda on being called garuda who had been very dejected came and stood ready the lord who had the powerful brilliance of various kinds of divine missiles mounted on garuda and went to the battlefield of suras there he saw devendra who was frightened and attacked by great danavas whose colors color was like that of a fresh clouds and who were excessively furious and he devendra was like a man who had been mobbed by unfortunate wretches seeking some monetary help on being frequently eulogized by suras vishnu went there for protecting them like a pure meritorious deed for protecting one from misfortune then the chief daitya saw an orb of luster in the sky like that of a hundred suns rising simultaneously danavas wished to know the source of that refulgence then they saw garuda as terrible as the fire at the close of kalpa they saw four armed hari of matchless splendor seated thereupon on seeing him the chief asuras became highly delighted in their minds oh this is that lord keshava the slayer of enemies the refuge unto all if this lord is defeated all the devas are also defeated there is no doubt about it it is by depending upon him the great guardians of the quarters and the immortal ones partake of their shares in the yagnas saying thus the ten great warriors of daityas kalanemi and others gathered together from various places encircled him from all sides and hit him with various weapons kalanemi pierced janardana with 60 arrows nimi hit him with a 100 arrows and manthana with 80 arrows jambaka struck him with 70 arrows and shumbha with 10 arrows the remaining daitya leaders hit vishnu with a arrow each they hit garuda with 10 darts each in the battle unable to break that action of theirs vishnu the slayer of danavas killed or struck each of the danavas with six arrows discharged straight 
Kalanemi once again pierced the chest of Vishnu by the three arrows each drawn as far as the ear. Due to anger, Kalanemi's eyes had become red, those three arrows resembling heated gold on his the Vishnu's chest shone like the brilliant rays of Kaustubha of sparkling luster. Pained a little on account of those arrows, Hari seized a mallet. Raising it, he discharged it with great velocity towards the Dhanava. Even before it reached him, the great Dhanava, who had become infuriated, split it into small pieces like gingerly seeds with hundred arrows even as it was still in the space. Thereby he exhibited his dexterity and rapidity of action. Thereupon Vishnu, who became infuriated, seized a terrible barbed missile. With that he speedily struck the heart of the Daitya. Regaining consciousness in a moment, Kalanemi, the great Asura, seized a Shakti the tip of which was very sharp and which produced a loud sound like that of a boisterous laughter with the golden bells attached to it. The del delighter of Diti pierced the left arm of Vishnu by means of that Shakti. As blood trickled from it, his arms that had been pierced by the Shakti shone like a blue cloud from which lightning streaks, streak flickers frequently. When the infuriated Vishnu took up a huge bow and seventeen arrows that had sharp tips which could pierce vital parts, with six and three arrows he pierced the heart of the Daitya, with four the charioteer and the flagstaff with a small single arrow. He cut the bowstrings of the, and the bow with, the two, with two arrows and the arm with one arrow. Like a man deluded by defects, he was deeply hurt in the heart. He became red all over the body on account of the blood that had flowed down. He was tall and his mind was agitated by pain. Like Kimshuka tree, Kimshuka tree shaken by the wind, he trembled much. On observing him trembling, Keshava seized a maze with great force. He hurled it at Kalanemi for killing him. That terrible maze immediately fell on Kalanemi's head. The Asura's crown was shattered and his head was shattered into pieces. From all the pores of his body, blood started oozing out. He appeared like a mountain from which the minerals flowed, down, flowed out. Broken down, devoid of consciousness, he fell down in his own chariot with the life still clinging to him. As the Dhanava fell into the chariot, Uchyuta, the slayer of enemies, the lord with the discus as his weapon, spoke these words with a smile, O Asura, you are left off, go, you can have some relief now, be alive, within a short while, I alone shall be your annihilator. On hearing these words of Vishnu, the Lord of all, the charioteer who was afraid of the Lord of the, all the worlds, took away the chariot of Kalanemi very far away within a moment. Thus ended chapter 19 of Kaumarika Kanda under the Maheshwara Kanda in Skanda Purana. Namaste Sharada Devi Kashmir Puramasini Tomaham Prarthaye Nityam Vidya Dhananchadehime. Goodbye.